Hello, this is a quick video to, to explain um, work breakdown structures and uh, cost estimation in, in software engineering. Uh, you'll have seen, probably seen this XKCD cartoon over here, which is uh, the author of the Windows file copy dialog visits some friends. So they start out by saying, I'm just outside town, I should be there in about 15 minutes. Then actually it's looking more like six days. Uh, no, wait, hang on 30 seconds. So if you ever copied a file on an operating system, you'll 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 sometimes get these estimates that wildly uh, change as you're copying a file. So estimating things is actually hard. I mean, slightly joking aside, it is actually very hard to estimate things accurately. And it gets harder when there's people involved. So whereas if we're est estimating how long uh, it might take to copy a file across a network, we're just talking about physical resources, it gets even harder when you're talking about human resources or people entering, entering your equation. So this is part of cost estimation and planning. This is part of software engineering, as I've already mentioned. Um, it fits into the middle part, the working with features part of um, the coursework and also the exam. And in, the, in this video, I'm just going to quickly explain why estimating accurately is difficult, is difficult to do and to reiterate why um, things that you can do, techniques you can use to help improve the accuracy of your estimation, not just in this coursework, but when you go out onto placement or you're going to a graduate job, um, your boss will come to you and say, how long do you think this bug or feature or whatever it is you're working on is going to take? And obviously this, this already came up in the coursework, will come up in the coursework and uh, there may be questions in the exam on estimation. So cost estimation is estimating the effort, resources and the schedule for software projects. So by effort we mean how, how hard it might be to, to do a particular job. The resources we mean principally time and people, how many people do you need to fix this bug or add this feature. Um, how long is it going to take them, and then what your, what your schedule is going to look like. Now, other definitions of cost estimation are available, but this is the one that we're using for uh, software engineering. So if you think back to the estimates that you've done, not just on, on in software engineering, but elsewhere, think about how you came up with that estimate. Uh, think about um, when, you've, when, when someone's asked you how long it's going to take you to do something, you said it's going to take X. Um, how did you come up with that estimate? So initially, perhaps when you were starting out, you were sort of uh, doing the sort of uh, finger in the air technique, which is uh, suck your finger, see which way the wind's blowing. Oh, yes, it's coming from the north today. Check the phases of the moon, that kind of stuff. Um, it, not very defensible. You might you might be lucky and come up with a, um, a an accurate estimate. More often than not, your 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 estimate when you've just guessed. Um, is is hard to defend later when your when your boss or your coworkers come back to you and said. You said you, was, you said it was going to take two days. Actually, it turned out to taking two weeks or whatever it might be. That's not very defensible. So it's important that when we, when we create estimates, we come up with something that is defensible. So a really simple way of doing this is what's called work breakdown structures, WBS. So this is a hierarchical decomposition of task goal into smaller scale task or goals. And it relies on the 100% rule. 100% rule meaning your time has to add up to 100%. So in the context of Stendhal, if we think about um, fixing a bug uh, about players losing health points between, say, 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning, we can break that down into, into several subtasks. So we can say, well, first of all, we're going to need to replicate the bug. Then we're going to need to actually fix the bug. Then we need to check and test that the bug really is fixed. We want to push push the bug to the repository and make sure then that the same bug doesn't exist elsewhere in our in our code base. And then we can break each of those steps down even further. So for example, uh, replicating the bug, we can break down even further. So um, we might want to replicate the bug manually. We might want to uh, gather um, missing information from our reporter. We might want to find tests for this or other similar functionality. And we want to write tests that reveal that bug. Now your 100% rule is, so if we go back, if we imagine you, if you were to split that evenly, you'd have say there's five, five points there so you might have 20% on each and, and your, your total needs to add up to 100% that's all that the 100% rule means obviously within that 20% for say the second bit replicate the bug we might break it down further into even smaller percentages so things that think about, have a think about um, something to think about generally is what makes estimating hard we've talked about um, uh, some of the things that you'll you've come across in this course unit are um, you're dealing with a code base that perhaps is unfamiliar. You might be working with um, a language that you've not used much before. You might be working with colleagues, for example, that um, that you've not used before, and you don't know what their abilities are on this particular on this particular task. So, th those are just some of the reasons that th that m that um, make cost estimation hard in software engineering. 
and um, uh, think of th have a think about others that you might might come across. And we've talked about things that can help you estimate. So we've talked about this this simple technique of work breakdown structure is just um, breaking it down into smaller sets of subtasks so that when your co-workers or your boss come back to you, you can say, well, this is why I this is why I thought it was going to take this long. Um, it doesn't matter if it took longer or shorter. You can say that that's why you can look back at your estimate and say say why, not just well, just because I guessed. So to round off, then the chaos report, uh, which is produced by the Standards Group, uh, estimates that successful projects um, it, um, in large companies, less than nine percent of um, large companies have successful projects in big IT projects. In medium companies it's slightly more and in smaller companies it's slightly more again but still only 28% of um, IT projects are considered successful uh, in, in small companies. Um, that's because of various things, it might be because of cost overruns, it might be because of time overruns, it might be because of content efficiencies. And a lot of this comes down to estimates when when, when people estimate how long projects are going to take, what, what, what what time and resources you're going to need, um, money you're going to need. Um, estimates are often um, inaccurate, which means that this leads to unsuccessful projects in the, in the long term. It leads to cost overruns and time overruns. And around, according to that, that Standish report, around half of IT executives think that there are more project failures now than there used to be uh, in the past. So um, that's it for um, work breakdown instructions. I hope you can find this technique useful. Um, it's not just useful in the exam and, and, and in the coursework. It's something that's useful when you, when you come to work and you come to estimate how long software will take you to build in a commercial or a, a, a working environment. So that's it. <laughs>